Darvis. Yep. One thing to check about, you just got a tripod right now, so this, the workshop starts this instant. So we're going to videotape it for the 210 or so students who didn't come. Uh, so they'll get a chance to watch it, but it's more boring to watch on video than to be here live. So thank you all for coming. I can see that looks like it might be a little bit off. You can always pull one of the legs of the tripod out a little bit. Okay. Or push one in, and yeah. get it to be a little more straight. There we it's go. a huge thing when, when you shoot some video. So, uh, I'm here today to talk with you as you know, and that's true, talk with you and shoot some video with you. Uh, from shooting to sharing video and music education, uh, there's also a handout that you have that preserves the key points and hopefully gives you a little bit of uh, help. You can take some notes on there. And my goal is to give you a quick overview, grab a handout on your way in, uh, of some key points. Here they are. We're going to talk. Ooh, oh, there we are. Uh, here we are. We're going to talk a little bit about shooting video and some tips for shooting video well, doing a good job, getting some footage that you're going to want to watch. And some other. We'll talk a little bit about uh, your responsibilities. This is a big issue, of course, the ethical dimension of taking video of somebody else's kids and what you do with it and how you handle it. Responsibly. We'll talk uh, briefly about sharing. We'll talk a little bit about some tools that I think are useful and helpful, and of course, uh, hopefully helpful to most of you, some selected vendors, because like anything else, there's deals out there, and there are a couple of places that have wonderful quality equipment or have fantastic uh, prices, good quality, good prices, and or both. And I threw together a quick little screen with a couple of video uh, images on it that you can see, just to get a, a sense of some of the things. That would be the video. Obviously, uh, on the bottom, we've got a ukulele play along that I shot last week. Uh, actually, Glenn is a cameraman on that. And we'll have a chance to look a little bit at this. This is one of the bonus uh, aspects of this is now that lots of you have cameras, you can actually shoot something with more than one camera and very quickly and inexpensively assemble that footage together. Uh, so that's one of the things that we'll look at. And uh, on the top right, you can see uh, some classroom footage. That's what a lot of you will be using the camera for shoot footage when you teach, when you do any demonstration teaching, maybe when you go out and have an early field experience, depending on the situation, when you're a student teacher, and then you're going to take that skill out with you when you become a teacher, because the most powerful uh, means that we have to better understand how our teaching works, and what it's like to be in our own classroom, is to get it outside of that experience and to get to see it through video. So that's why we believe strongly enough that owning a camera is a professional record having the ability to shoot something. And also have the ability to shoot and share the work that your students do, their performances, share that with them. Right? And we have also a little interview on the top left corner. You get to see some students reflecting on some learning experiences that they had back in East Palo Alto, California. But rather than jump into the next uh, slide, I'm going to back out for a second and just say, let's put our money where our mouth is and let's do it really quickly. So here's a flip. Right? which is a recommended but not required camera. It's recommended because in and amongst my 10,000 other videos, I don't have video reviewers. But this is a reliable and expensive camera. So I turn the switch, I turn it on, I press the button, and I'm recording. And here's all of you sitting here. And here's somebody coming in late, busted. <laughs> but it is <laughs> busted. Get a, get a handout if you like on the way in, up there. And so we're just shooting a little, right? I just want to grab it and do something with it, right? So we've shot it. I can click goodbye, turn it off. You're going to see one of my recommendations. If you have a camera like this that connects to your computer and has a built-in connector, ignore that in a way. Buy yourself an extension cable. Uh, they're very inexpensive. And that way they don't put any stress on your computer logic board, which costs, if it's a laptop, sometimes six, $700 to replace. I'll plug it in up here, and if I open myself up a finder window, there it is, flip video, right? I can find out where the video footage is. It's right here. It's called vid001.avi. And I'm just going to drag it to the desktop. Here it comes, 12 megabytes. It's down. Once it's there, and I confirm its presence, I'll click on it and open it up. Usually what I want to do, and I'm recording, 
and here's all of you sitting here. That's bizarre. Uh, once I know I have it, I want to get rid of it off my off my player. And that, in this instance, all I do is I, is I just put it in the trash, empty the trash. So, and then I'll eject the camera, and it's done. I'm going to plug it. It turned itself off. And then the next question, of course, what do we need to do with the footage? We want to put it up somewhere. I have a YouTube account, um, and I'll just show you how easy this is. How many of you upload to YouTube already? A couple of you. Setting up an account is inexpensive. In, in other words, it's free. Uh, if you're logged into your account, you can just click it. You can come right over in the standard YouTube window and click Upload. It's going to give me a chance to find the video that I want to upload. I'll click Upload here to select a video on our desktop. that same name, I can change it and call it workshop video. You know, that's a description. And I'm going to, there's a default privacy setting, right? I'm going to choose private. Now I'll click save. Now my stuff is there. My video has been uploaded successfully. We're on YouTube, right? And one of the things we'll note if we go to the my video section, hasn't come up yet. Down here it says uploading processing, please wait. Something to realize is that YouTube always shows you a video with one certain format. Right now I think it's Flash. I know it's not Flash. It's maybe it's uh, MPEG 4. Or it's, I have no idea what it is. It is Flash. And uh, having it up there in Flash, it always is going to re-encode what it is. So we're almost with video back in that age of the cassette tape. Uh, I made a tape of a tape of a tape. I started with video that was already compressed from the flip, and then it gets recompressed to go up on uh, YouTube. And there are a couple of ramifications of that, one of which means we have to wait a little bit for the video to get out there. Um, but it's coming. You can see some of the other videos that I've already got up. Uh, if you're shooting something publicly, it's great to see how many people have viewed. So my tuning your ukulele video is up to 10. <laughs> 12 for how you're stringing your ukulele. This one's private. Two of us is up to 53 because it's a Beatles cover song, of course. Some other things, and then a couple things are up high, 270. I think my highest is at uh, well, to play along with the ukulele, it's 1800, which isn't that much in YouTube hits. So we can so I'll click on this again. Sometimes before it's completely done processing, it will show itself, but you can see we're not quite there yet. So we'll come back to this video in a little bit. In the meantime, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, in addition to shooting video of our teaching and our own learning and capturing performances and stuff, you can make your own instructional content, like the ukulele stuff I just saw. Here's one of our master students from last year, Chris Ayari. He made uh, a, a short set of solfege videos that just show how to sing a scale and use the Kodai hand signs. Uh, very simple, very easy. He posted them on a site called SchoolTube, which is YouTube, but it's moderated so that you know footage can't get posted and it's not in and schools don't block it, things like that. But it's a nice way to get your ideas, your teaching, and your name out there. Uh, Chris Carey did this as a summer project in a class that I had a master's class. The next week, I think it was three days later, uh, you can see on the paint down there, it's hard to really read. It's this great instructional solfege video with hand symbols. Learn how to sing a major in natural mind skill. This is a, an MENC member email that went out to probably 90 to 120,000 people and featured Chris's video four days after he made it. Um, of course, not everybody went and looked at it, but just to imagine that you, know, you yourself can make a little something, can illustrate something, can share something, put it up on the web, and the next thing you know, have lots of attention for the teaching that you're doing is wonderful. You know? So, it's another thing.